Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Love Hour podcast. I'm your host, Miss Kev on stage, and I'm joined by my husband and co-host who has been getting ready for the last 20 <laughs> minutes and then is still adjusting things. <laughs> we miss Josh. Are you straight? By the way, my name is The Kev on stage. Yes, I'm straight. And this title is not clickbait. Welcome to the Love Hour. I'm your host. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for joining us today. If you are new today, uh, to the love hour. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. We talk about life, love, and the pursuit of happiness on this podcast. And today's episode will be a little bit different. Um, as Kevin was kind of mentioning and jumping the gun, that this is not a clickbait <laughs> Uh, title. This is not a clickbait episode. We are going to take you through a journey of how we went from purchasing our home that we designed and well, semi designed, um, picked out some of our furnishing had two loan approvals, two loan approvals were then oh, rescinded. Oh. And then we no longer had a home to buy. And then we moved into the place that we are in now. Um, some of you know this story, some of you do not. So it will be news to actually most nobody, of you. none of y'all know <laughs> the whole detail except close family and friends. Yes. So um, yeah, we're not gonna do a this or that this week. Although we've been taking it really easy this week. I do want to do one just really quick shout out before we get into this and that is if you haven't watched any replays of the baby face teddy riley um battle rematch 2 you should definitely do that it is quite hilarious and find the version that starts from the very beginning when they were trying to do pin the versus pin the comment, comment yeah. and with the hashtag and you know presented by swiss beats and timberland the joy <laughs> And the hilariousness of literally watching your uncles trying to work technology without their children was quite hysterical and something that I aspire to be. I am well in my way, actually, yes. to this level of uncle and auntie dumb because there are already things that I don't know in movie titles that I get mixed up. And so I only aspire. And so I highly recommend Versus is literally the best thing to come out of quarantine 2020. Do you concur? Yes. You ready to get into it? Ain't nobody thinking about no verses right now. Yes, they are. <laughs> no, I'm thinking about this house. Oh. Okay, somebody wanted me to do a shout out, so that was for you. All right, so let's get into it. So this all started back in December of 2019 when Kevin and I, um, I well, really what goes on is that we were looking for a new place to stay because our lease was up in the home that we were in in June. So June 3rd, our lease was up. And so I started looking for new places to stay and really I'm a glutton for punishment. So I was looking at houses, just really getting my, my feelings hurt because houses in Los Angeles are very, very expensive. And then Kevin did a spectrum photo or not photo shoot, commercial shoot. And on the way, driving out that way, I saw this new housing development and the prices were low in in bunny ear quotations <laughs> for Los Angeles. And I was like, yo, like, one thing I knew I wanted was a new construction home. Mm -hmm. Why? Because homes in LA, number one, like I said, they are expensive and they're old and people do like interior type of remodels, but the nuts and bolts of the home don't, they be trash. They be old. People's house on the outside, you will never know how expensive people's houses are based on the outside yeah. you know the new the inside is crazy it's so crazy but, but you can spend 1.5 2 million dollars on a home from the 60s 70s some even the 30s sometimes it'd be like ramblers they'd be expensive and they've you know done it all up and got the countertops looking nice and got your stainless steel appliances but the plumbing is trash yes the roof is garbage like it'd be stupid stuff like that and you're like i'm not finna spend every bit of all my money that i have and don't have <laughs> on this home to get in it and then have to do all of this work to repair it like you walk in and you're like wow it's beautiful but my hot water doesn't work but for three minutes like that makes no sense to mm -hmm. me and so I was like dead set on if we are going to buy a home in Los Angeles then I want it to be a new construction home because I don't want to inherit um, inherit all of the problems that people don't tell you about like you can get you know people come out and they do the inspection and all that but there's just going to be stuff you're going to miss or stuff that doesn't 
doesn't show up for two or three years and I just don't want that headache. Um, so we had started looking and I saw, like I said, that community and I plugged in my sign child. Listen, I signed up for their email blast when they did their open house. I um, put it in my calendar even like it was a whole deal. Okay. Like I was fully committed. So we went mm -hmm. to their open house. Um, again, the prices were less expensive than again the houses that you see that are either already built or just other more expensive houses and um we were talking and we were like let's just see like let's just see what happens so we sat down with their loan officer that they had on site their bank rep that they had on site and she started mentioning all of these programs and we were like yo we think we could do this. <laughs> like there were these programs we never knew existed. And Kevin and I worked in the, the banking industry 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about 10 years Probably ago. Probably 10 years maybe ago. Maybe a little more, but at least 10. 10, 10 plus or minus and, or maybe more on the plus. Um, and they, these programs weren't a thing when we were working and beyond that we just were unfamiliar with them because to be honest homes so there's it, when you're buying a home there's base there's a couple different things but I'm going to stay at this point so if you're under a certain threshold that's one loan type and then if you're over a certain threshold it's another loan type and that loan type is called a jumbo loan so over like 770 760, 760, 760, 760 um, 760,000 is considered a jumbo loan type. Well, in Los Angeles, chow, uh, an apartment square is that like all loans are considered jumbo. Like that's just a fact of what life is here. And so um, that's we were unfamiliar with. Listen, we couldn't afford a jumbo loan type before. We didn't have homes that cost that much. We just didn't know about it. So we were unfamiliar. So as the woman is telling us about the loan programs that they have available and the options that are available, it suddenly became like a realistic thing that we can do. Mm -hmm. OK, do you want to take over? No. OK, so then what we did was we sat down with their loan officer from um, one of a huge bank and we sent over all our paperwork. You know, when you're doing a loan mortgage, you have to send over everything, your first child, blood work, blood, everything. So we sent all of that over to her. And because of we are um, self-employed and we have a lot of write-offs. Why? Because we have a crew that we travel. We play for a hotel. We pay for salaries. We pay for this office. This office. Racism and non-racism. Tra transportation for um, all. Like I don't know how many of you guys know, but when we were doing the real comedians of social media tour, the comedians that travel with us get food. They get hotel and they get airfare. Plus, we pay them a fee. So because we're paying that, all of that is a write off. OK, so um, all of that comes out of your taxable income. So it makes it like we don't make that much money. So she was like, listen, like, I totally get it. You guys are like self-employed and, you know, I get how much you bring in revenue wise. But it looks like you only make about this much and that doesn't really work. Yeah. So, so what you end up having a problem with being self-employed is. You either pay yourself a real a lot of amount mm -hmm. and have to pay taxes on that or you write off as much as you can and you don't pay taxes on it. But when you don't pay as many taxes, um, it looks like you don't make any income. Right, right, right. So it's hard to do both, you know, write off enough stuff so your taxes aren't crazy and show a lot of income. So self-employed people usually end up paying more for stuff They or they don't get approved for stuff or there are certain loan programs and of Especially for houses, for cars, it's not as much of a no, big deal because no. the payments are much smaller. Yeah. Um, when we went to buy the car, they were like, "Whatever, y'all can have these Whatever. seven. Take, right. take these seven. Right. But for the home, it's like, nah, we need to underwrite that. So. And part of the reason why, and again, this point will come in a bit in a minute in the story. Um, but part of the reason why is because if we all remember the Great Recession of 2008. Which is the, right after we bought our first house. Yes, it was. <laughs> um, but during that time when the housing market crashed, what happened is the government came in and created minimum standards for people to um, that are required for people to present or have in order to purchase a home that is qual called a qualified mortgage. I know this is a lot, but these details matter. OK, so that is called a qualified loan. If you meet the certain requirements, there's like um, you have to have a W-2, you have to have a credit score, you have debt to have certain debt to income ratio, like all of those things. If you have all of those things, it's called it's considered a qualified loan. Therefore, Freddie Mae, Fannie Mac backs it. 
those are good to go loans. Anything you can get approved for a loan, a mortgage outside of those standards, but it is called a non-qualified loan. And usually it's more expensive. And they're more, because they're considered riskier, yes. even though anyways. So they're considered riskier. Okay, so we sit down with the lady, like I said, we, um, she's like, no, but what we can do, we have basically a non-qualified um, loan officer that is outside of the banking world, because again, they're going the more qualified route. We'll sit down with him and you, I'll connect you guys with him and you guys figure it out. So again, we sent over all this paperwork, okay? This is again, right before we went to Japan, Japan in December. Thank God we didn't get no, I mean, I know it started in China, but listen, it might have started in America. Facts, we really don't yeah. know. But the fact is that we were traveling a uh, like. I, by uh, the way, aside, I think I got it. So I don't know if none of no, that stuff matters. No, that's true. I'm pretty sure I had COVID nineteen. I and, think you did, and I got it from to here. So that, where was he? He was in Virginia. <laughs> so that's facts. Like yeah. we, but the fact that we were like traveling overseas, yeah, like yeah. that's kind of kind of majored. So. Anyways, um, so we sit down with him. This is again right before we went to Japan, and I don't remember if during Japan or when we came back we got approved. No, when we came back. Okay, so we sent over that paperwork. We went on like the Christmas break, whatever. As soon as we come back from Japan, the beginning of the year, so this is like January, um, we we get the notification that we're approved, and he had fully underwritten our loan. Fully underwritten fully. the loan. Just te- plug in the amount. Um, the only thing we had to do was um, get the upgrades that we wanted into the house and add that to the loan and send him the final uh, number and and we were approved. Okay, so let's stop right there. That's actually a good point. So during this time, we had found a house, okay? So we went actually low-key from the community that I originally went that was in my phone and all that. We were, I was like, yo, Kev, so listen, <laughs> if they're gonna approve us anyway. I don't really like this builder. I like this builder. So how about we ask him if he can approve us through a different builder? So we went back, the same guy that approved us, and he was like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, y'all, we got approved for, like, a lot. Uh, like. More than we would ever buy. More than we would ever buy, he approved us for. So he was like, truthfully, go wherever y'all like. Like, I, whatever y'all want, you don't can have. No, never mind. Yeah, it don't make me no, never mind. So I was like, bet. So we went to this other um, community, and I fell in love with like three homes the first well actually I didn't really like the first one but we were willing to settle settle and then the second home I really 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 liked and it was the one that I thought we were gonna get and in the middle of that we um were trying to get approved through the builders because remember this loan officer was the preferred outside lender for that other builder okay so this new builder has their own in-house loan company mortgage Mm -hmm. company so we were trying to get approved with them but they they work slow y'all they were so and they were very like it was slow and meticulous it was like it was it was meticulous alone takes time and then they were not quick which takes time so it was like a very arduous long process that this week we got to send this and you got to take all your PayPal's from, you know, these and they eight, don't the, uh, go ahead. These eight deposits from PayPal last year, where are they from? We're like, they're all, all these are from, from the tour. We were getting tickets into PayPal. We transferred to our bank. Okay. But what, are, what do these all mean? We need a letter saying right. each of these, what they're for. We're, I'm telling you now they're all okay. This one's from the tour. Yeah. This one's from the tour. This one's from the right. tour. This one's from the tour. You guys, we were like, so it was frustrating beyond, beyond frustrating. And mind the way, I want to pause here. There was before we got to the house we agreed on. There was tension between me and Le- Melissa. Yes, getting to that house. So here's a no, no, no. This was after. No, no. This is before. No, this is after the house that we wanted, and then we lost that house, so to speak, and then we went to the bigger one, and that's where the tension inserted. Okay, child, this is a lot, okay? This is a juicy story. Follow us, okay? So I just want to piggyback off your statement, and then we'll make sure to go there. I want to piggyback off the statement because when you are self-employed, there's so many different ways to be self-employed. There's Mm -hmm. no standard. When you have a W-2, it's very simple. This is how much your employer said they paid you. This is how much we took out. This is your net we're done like that's so easy but when you are self-employed there's so many different ways to be self-employed and at the loan offer they don't be knowing they just ain't caught up so we were getting questions like what is eventbrite 
are you serious? What is this PayPal? <laughs> what? Like, no lie. And like, literally, we had to write a letter that was like, Eventbrite is a payment processing uh, platform that you use when you host live events. We use them for our events such as this, this, and this. When you see a payment for like, li- like, I, no lie, this is the things we had to do through the preferred lender of the the um, builder. So as we go through, as we're going through that process again, it's slow and they're a little bit more meticulous or maybe just not as savvy as that other lender that we had got, that we had went through. Um, they were, it just took longer. In the midst of that, the house that we wanted, it was the last house because this uh, community was completely sold out except for like three houses. And this house was in the st- the last house in the uh, floor plan that I wanted child they called us on like a Thursday and the lady left me a voicemail I missed it I called her on Friday and she was like um I just want to let you guys know that we have another buyer for this home I'm so sorry they're ready ready able and willing she kept saying they're ready ready able and willing and I was like first of all I'm ready able and willing too. yo you acting slow but anyways uh why we she's like but basically we have this other buyer and we're just gonna go with them instead of you Okay, so first of all, I'm crushed because I'm like, this is the home I wanted. It was like precisely in our price range. I don't know what to do. Mind you, it was also before we got, um, I didn't know that the other lender had approved us. Yeah. Yeah. So I call Kev like near tears, like they're selling the house and I don't know what to do. And I don't know why this is taking so long. He's like, what are you talking about? The other guy approved us. Like, And I'm like, well, he didn't email me. So I had no comeback to her. And I was like, they told us we had additional five days. It's only been like three days. I'm conf- like, I was so frustrated. So anyway, listen, we go back up to the community, right? Because I'm irritated. Okay, so we give them a like earnest money check, so to speak, that like we're serious about this. So we go up there and I'm like, Kev, I want to get the check back from her. And I want to like low key, like have an attitude about it. (laughs) So we go up there and I'm like, I just want I just don't understand why you told me I have until the 15th and today's the 10th and you're already selling the home. Well, we had and I was like, and by the way, the other lender did approve us. I actually have the letter right. And I'm like literally pulling up my phone. This is the letter right here. This is how much we've been approved for. You see, your house is less than that. Okay. <sighs> like this is fully underwritten. Y'all We're think done. I'm one always trying to flex. Listen. Melissa was trying to flex. Because I was irritated because she didn't adhere to what the agreement was. You told us we had, I think it was like a week, like uh like a calendar week. So five business days to present you the next the the paperwork. Within two of those days. You were like, sorry, it's sold. That's irritating. And Mm. I think because when it's the weekends and we out doing our business and I would be coming um, from Joey's like practice or games or whatever, I'm looking like who did it and why. (laughs) (laughs) And so I honestly just felt like she was like, who is this young black couple? They probably ain't got the money. They probably just, this is the last house in this area. I can just get rid of this house and be done. That's honestly how I felt. So once we got the approval, I was like, I feel validated. Like, I want you to know you screwed up. So if you're in my book club, did you want to add anything to that? Mm -hmm. You sure? Okay. So if you're in my book club, you know that around this time, um, I decided to write a letter. So I wrote a letter to the um, management company of the builder. And I explained the situation and provided receipts because I wanted him to know I'm not just angry and frustrated and I'm wrong. I'm angry and frustrated and y'all are wrong. So after we, I did that, the guy responded like within 24 hours, apologized profusely. And even the loan officer was like, you got, I don't know why they treated you guys. The loan officer was low key legit, but he was like, I don't know why they treated you guys like this. Like we really are in the process. Like they should have called me, whatever. And so he, he apologized and he offered us, um, a, what do you call this? Incentive. Incentive. Good word. If we decide to say he'll give us an X dollar amount on our upgrades. Um, and so at that time, This is where the tension started. I'll take over the tension. Okay, go. So house, this is a Goldilocks situation. House Melissa wanted was just right in the middle. The next house they want, or actually they don't care whether you buy it, but the next house up is, is too big, too expensive. Yes. The next house down is too small, but even lower price than Melissa's favorite price. Here's where we get into tension. Melissa's like, 
I want the house that I want. <laughs> the house I was supposed to have. And I'm like, okay, but that house is gone. It, it is gone, Melissa. We can't get that house. But I want it. Okay, but you can't have it. It is sold. They apologized. They gave us an incentive. They even gave us a sub-zero fridge for our new home, which is going to be either smaller and well under what we wanted to pay or bigger and a little more than what we wanted to pay. Me and Melissa get into a full-fledged for like arguments. three days. You more guys, than that. You more guys, than that. Uh, probably. It the was thing about, is, no, I'm still talking. Okay. Here's where I messed up. And I know this. But wait, at this point, I want you to color this a little bit. I don't bit. want to. I want to say what I want to say. Okay, I'll I'm let a, you talk. I'm going to color a little bit. I'm going to let you talk. No, let me color. You color after I talk. I've been quiet. I've been working on not talking over people. I'll I'm here talk. to talk over you. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the mistake I made. I spoke to the logic of the situation. Logic, And I'm upset too. But we handle being upset very differently. Melissa needs time to sit in her feelings, to be sad. And I'm just going to be sad for a day, for two days, for three days. I'm not going to make another decision. I'm still just sad. I want to mope. I'm going to be sad. I am like, all right, this sucks. Let's make the next choice. We're either going to pay more and get this freaking crazy dope house. Or we're going to pay less. It's going to be not crazy dope house, but the payment will be, you know, good. Because what Melissa didn't say is, over the year of the tour, we didn't make any increases in any part of our life. No. No new house, no Range Rover, no lease. We stayed in this braggity house, and the people are going to start seeing me show my house a lot more. The reason I didn't show my other house is because it was not dope. <laughs> was so it? I'm always framing stuff out. I only show the little piece because it was an old house. Like, it wasn't a house to be proud of. Yeah. My office was nice. Melissa's Mind office you, was and nice. that house cost as much as... This house that we... Just, just for framing. Yes. This old pre-World War II Rambler, maybe 1,800 square feet, mm -hmm. maybe 2,000 square feet. On Zillow, this is a piece of trash house. On Zillow was like $700,000. Yep. Okay? Our neighbor works for Disney across the street. They paid seven hundred. dollars They have crazy flat screen, all this nice stuff inside, outside, pre-World War II, disgustingly ugly house. Okay? So me and Melissa get into an argument. I'm like, Melissa, we have to make a decision. Do you either want to... She's like, I want the bigger house that they're offering us, but it's out of my price range. Well, let's get the smaller house. I don't want the smaller house. It's too small, it is but it's blessed. in your price range. Well, I don't want that. I so want you're that. telling me that you want a big house with the price of a small house. Yes. You cannot have that. Yes. Well, you don't understand me. This isn't that blah, blah, blah. I, I mean, didn't we, say you don't understand me, but we were in a full fledged argument. We were in argument. full fledged. We were more at a standstill because Kev was like, let's just make a decision. And if it was inconsequential, fine, let's make a decision. But the fact of the matter is I am juggling what I believe we'll be able to afford. Will I be comfortable with that? With that? Do I think in the future, if everything goes to crap, i.e., COVID-19. And I, I'm going to just say, <laughs> when I'm making my, obviously I'm making my point for the bigger house. Yes. I'm like, it's your boy. Things are on the up and up. Outside of me getting canceled, there's no reason to think we can't afford this. Yes. Right? Melissa's like, you never know what might happen. You never this know. This is literally the third or fourth time in our relationship. <laughs> you never know what might happen. And then you never Has know happens. Happened. And I'm like, so when Corona happened, I was like, this dog on girl. And literally, and we're talking about this in what, January? February is we really had marital problems about this house in January. Yeah. There was a good it was frustrating just to begin with, but that period That's when we I lost the cover. house, um that stress became me and her. Yeah. This is our money story. This is the way we see the world. I'm like, I didn't work this hard. I don't travel this much to get this small house. If it's more, I'm Kev on stage. I'm finna. I'll get. I literally said, if I gotta do a, a monthly room in LA to pay this mortgage, I will do that because I travel half the year almost. When I come home, I want it to be fly. And if I gotta pay more, I'll pay more. Melissa acts like we have eleven dollars. <laughs> no matter how much money we make, how many commercials, how many tours, the podcast, the YouTube revenue. We have $12 now. I'm like, Melissa, you have acted like we've been broke our entire marriage. And she gets this from her dad. Yes. And this is why I say it's really important to understand people's uh, family. Her dad, same way. Her dad had saved 
God knows. Her dad was like Carol Baskin's first husband. Nobody <laughs> even really knows how, how much, much money. That's he facts. If you ask him how much money he has, he will, j- I ain't got it. And My then he'll go buy it. a brand new house in Atlanta. I thought you didn't have it. Didn't have it then. Have it now. <laughs> right? So Melissa's the same way. If I had a $10 million movie contract and that money went into my account, Melissa would be like, we have $13 now. That's just the way she That's is. just the way my mind works. And it is part of my, mir- or my money and story. And it's infuriating. And I was irritated because it was, we were on the same page for the house that we lost, okay? The house that was swept from under us. We were on the same page. Yes. And so I was irritated because I'm like, I'm fussing and arguing and disagreeing with my husband for a circumstance that we didn't create. Yes. That wasn't our fault. They're adding this pressure to us. And I, and so I'm irritated with them. I'm irritated with the circumstance. I'm irritated. I have to make this decision. I'm irritated because I don't know what the right decision is. I'm irritated because if I go smaller, I know I'm going to be upset with myself. And, and that's not what I be. didn't want. If, if we got that smaller house, here's what I didn't want. <laughs> this, this is just me, the husband, provider, whatever. Melissa complained about our old house all the time. Every time it hit me personally, this house too small. Kevin, what I, what all she's saying is this house too small. What I hear is we need a bigger place. Kevin, you need to make sure it happens. I ain't got no cause of space. I don't have nowhere to shoot because of this. I can't do nothing because of this. Look at this thing falling apart. We had a freaking shower problem in this old house. It's still ain't dog fixed. Gone. Property manager would still not ain't fix. fixed. The doggone, there was a, a leak. It would go under the, the tub. It would leak into the master bedroom. These people blocked a hole in the wall of the shower. And they said, oh, it's coming over. Y'all ain't putting the shower curtain back. We Do you think we are dumb enough to not put the curtain back far enough and, and make a leak out? They, they, y'all. The, the the shower is in the bathroom with the door. Right. The, the leak is outside, outside of the door in the room under Underneath. the carpet. <laughs> now, mind you, on the top of the carpet, I mean, on the top of the the floor, in the bed, the bathroom, it is dry. How could this be dry and this be wet if we're not? You and it wasn't like this for the first three or four years. Like, like five think, years. You are yelling. Sorry. I was like, do y'all think we're dumb? So then they keep scheduling. Re- anyway, the house sucks. I don't even need to go into that because it's still frustrating. The house sucks. And every time Melissa complains, I hear it. To right? be clear, so I'm mind, not asking him. It is I, his interpretation. I know, no, no, I just want to make sure people heard that because I don't want people to think I'm putting this pressure on him. And in fact, we've had that conversation as well where I'm like, when I'm saying these things, I'm just venting aloud. It's now not listen, meant to put I'm pressure on over you. Go for, for it. For this point. Because when she said that, now, <laughs> in our, oh, we talked about something love about our old travel booker for the hotel, for the hotel and flights. Yes. She would be messing up. Mm-hmm. When I, Melissa is, was her handler. Melissa put the stuff in the grid. The lady would look at the grid, book the wrong stuff. I would complain that the lady complained to Melissa. This girl, this woman keeps messing up. Melissa was like, I need you to take care of her handling her. I'm like, why? Because when you say she messes up, it feels like I'm messing up. I'm like, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about her, but mm-hmm. it feels like me. Right. So in the same, this is the exact same thing happening to me now. She's not complaining about the house. She's not complaining about me. She's complaining about the house and I'm taking it personally. Right. And the last thing I want is to buy a new home and immediately have her be like, this is too small. So I'm pushing her towards the bigger house because I'd rather stress myself out paying for it. Which I whether not do. Than to hear her complain about it being too small all over again. And you see the tension. Yes. So because that's not a responsibility or a pressure that I would ever want to put on Kevin where I feel like if I can't pull my weight to help contribute to the house financially and I'm expecting all of you to do it then that's not a that's not a predicament I want to put my family in I do not want to put my my family in a position where I can't contribute substantially to make something happen and it's now all because that's stress on my husband that's stress on us now you got to be gone all the time now I'm wondering why I'm not getting I don't want to do all that and in and, my defense I'm like I'm I'm not doing it alone we right. do the podcast alone. We do all this stuff. The only thing I do alone is stand up comedy. Yeah. But even the two years prior to that, you were on the road. So I'm Shut not up. even like it's you. Like, no, the love I was selling tickets. Yeah. Like, don't don't discount that. 
That was it was too much. But you see, so all of this stuff is like weighing in my mind. It's weighing in Kevin's mind. Child, we were just not coming to a decision. So what happened was the um again the uh, general manager. I don't know what to call him. District manager. Yeah, district president. Just in president. That's right. That was his title. Called us again. He offered us this incentive because he, basically he was like, we failed you. And he like listed them here. We could have done better here. We could have done better here. We could have done better. And here we could have done better. And the fact that we didn't, I apologize. We don't want to lose you as a customer. So we're going to give you this incentive. And then they gave us an additional incentive on the back end. So I was like, well, that's kind of enough for me. And so that's when we made the decision to buy this bigger home. So we were squared away. Squared away. And this home was a, um, they call it a quick delivery. And what that basically means when you buy a home with a new builder, you get to pick some of the furnishings in it. You get to pick like certain things in the house. But because this was quick delivery, um, they had already picked a lot of the things up to the point where that we decided to to buy the home. So there were only like, we could pick like the floors, the hardware, Really, that was like it, huh? Mm-hmm. There was like a few other things, smaller things that we could build, the, yeah. pick. But pretty much the biggest thing was like the bathroom tile stuff and then the floors were like the, the biggest thing. Stuff. Yeah, the sinks, that kind of thing. So by the time the, all of this happens, we're like, I'm like straight. We got our fully, fu- fully not funded. Okay, that's important. It's not funded. Fully but we got our fully underwritten loan approval as a backup. We have now gone through the process or going through the process of getting fully approved through their preferred lender. Now pause here real quick. We are in this whole process reserving happiness. Yes. Okay? The first happiness is we get approved. Okay, we got approved from the backup lender. That's That's cool. Okay, but it's backup. Let's get approved from the mainland. Yeah. Okay. Now this whole process is is we reserving happiness, getting a little more excited yeah. every time because you now mind you we're picking out furniture, not furniture, but uh hardware and floors. But we haven't been fully. Um, they they're moving forward because we put the, the money. And mind down. you, we put our earnest money down. We sure did. And show. when we got approved from the outside lender, we put five percent of the house down. We sure so did. So we're invested. We're in because if they don't approve us for whatever reason through the primary uh loan of the builder we already are approved for the backup because they wouldn't move forward if you're not approved by one of the two either yeah. the main people or a backup person or you have to like formally decline re- their decline, thing, right? yeah so we are like approved so every week you know melissa also once we got approved and put the money down melissa goes into furniture purchase mode mm-hmm. now she buying stuff first for this up, layout for this layout she buying stuff first she filled up her office okay <laughs> Then it spilled out into the living room. Then it spilled out into my office. <laughs> then it spilled out into the, the boys, boys room. room. And we like, Lisk, what you know we're not moving till <laughs> first it was May 15th. Then they pushed it up to April, mid mid April. April 30th. Like actually. next week, y'all. Yeah. So she going ham on the stuff. So we're feeling more crowded in this house, but we're not tripping. I'm like, I'm looking at the Patreon camera the whole time. <laughs> we're not tripping because we are approved. Mm-hmm. We start going to the grocery store in this neighborhood. So did. We start going to visit the house because it's getting, you know, the stuff we're asking for is getting put in. We go up there and we have a meeting about the tile. Next time we go and see the paint. The tile's done. The tile's done. So it's like going on in the process and it's moving up and moving up. So we're going and we, we, we ain't beefing no more. Okay. No, this is happy time. Yeah, we're once happy. we've decided about the house and like this is what we're going to do. We were we're now on the same page, uh, and we are putting our money where our mouth is. Yep, we put that money down. We put and that, that money made down. It real, and then I was on tour at this time, so I was able to make the the de- the down payment mm-hmm. money back mm-hmm. from touring. And I'm like, okay, I know we can afford this house yeah. because our bank account is right back to where it was with 5% down. We having so much good time. We having great sex too. I'm Hello. talking about, we having the best sex. I'm talking about, ho, ho, yeah. I'm coming back from the tour. I got blue chew in my backpack. Yay. Pop one in and then I pop one into her. And I'm talking about increased performance and extra confidence in bed. Listen up. Bluechew.com, that's blue like the color blue. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA approved active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis. And this is like my performing enhancing pill. It's like I need a little boost and then I get a little boost and then I take care of that caboose. You understand me? I'm in that <laughs> big, big energy, big meat energy. Okay. 
having the time of my life. We're laughing, we're smashing. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line in the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. Right now, we got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free. We can use our special code, special promo code, LOVE. LOVE. Just pay $5 for shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E, Chew.com. Promo code LOVE. LOVE. To try it for free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for, for sponsoring, sponsoring the, the podcast. podcast. So mind you, I'm going up there uh, to work out. I'm walking the hill up there because now Corona starts happening. Yeah. Okay. And Corona, this is Corona is the reason we lost this house. So let me paint the picture for you. Me and Melissa go up there. We start grocery shopping in there. We visit that model home 8 million times. There's a model home, obviously. And I'm going up there all of the time. Listen, in my phone, I have measurements of things and where things are going to go. So I'm buying furniture according to, I want this here. I want this here. This wall is this depth and this long and this, this. So I can buy. So I'm buying stuff. So when we move in, like how we moved into this home, rocking and rolling. Because I know what I want, where I want it. I got my color scheme. Like I'm rocking and rolling. And then we get the full approval. Yes. We can tell you that we have a confirmation we get the full letter when in like the end of february yeah. early march yes confirmation letter from the from the builders in their preferred mortgage. lender we are approving you here's your confirmation letter and they beat because we sorry good you I'm sorry and you're i know enough. i can't do it i'm not i'm not i'm not sorry we, uh, no, uh, you need to stop. I'm we talking. Got, we I got, am talking. We, I am talking. Sir, get off your high horse. <laughs> you are the king of this. The um the old the first lender we got approved through because we got approved they beat. Were you gonna say that? No, I don't know what I was gonna say. <laughs> they beat their um rate. So it ended up being like even cheaper than what we thought we were going to end up paying. They beat their rate. They added these incentives, and so it ended up being really it worked out in our favor. Then the news comes. Our lender guy calls. Yes. And we, mind you, let me just paint the picture for why this sucks so bad. In this house, you have to get your own landscaping done. We go to our outside landscaper. We pay this man a thousand dollars non-refundable. He shows us this super dope backyard, super dope front yard, fire pit, garbage, uh, barbecue grill, everything. Okay. The next day. The mortgage guy calls. Wait, 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 Kev. Wait, this is important because this is where it gets really sad. While we are at the appointment for the landscaping, it's when we get a call from the builder. Hey, things are moving really, really great. You guys are approved and um, the house is moving faster than it's expected. So instead of closing May 15th, we're going to move you up to April 28th. So Kev's talking to the guy and I run in there and I'm like, put this in the calendar. I'll remember in a minute. So I'm super excited. Like, listen, we are rocking and rolling. We have an actual closing date. We got our landscaper locked and loaded. We know what we're going to do. We have furniture in the house. We're about to move in here and just be like, boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom does not happen. <laughs> this guy calls us and says, unfortunately, because of coronavirus, your loan type does not exist anymore in the market. And we're like, what, what do you what mean? What does that mean? Non-qualifying mortgages do not exist. So what happens when you buy a home, generally when you're buying a house from a mortgage lender, what they really do is they buy your mortgage and they float it, mm -hmm. okay? They basically put it on credit. Then they have a buyer set up who's gonna actually be Invest. your investor, okay? So for example, Bank of America, they buy your loan and they say, okay, mortgage company X, we're gonna sell you this loan. And you're gonna be the one who gets the investor, uh, the interest and you're gonna make your money. So the builder just holds it for a minute. They have a plan to sell it. They do not finance technically, they don't, actually hold on to your mortgage themselves. Right. They basically put it on credit. It's called a warehouse credit thing. They put your whole loan on credit and while it's an escrow, they people give the money, blah, blah, blah. You're actually paying somebody else. They told us that up front. No we problem. were in the banking industry. We know how that works. That's how the subprime lending thing blew up because these people got shadier and shadier. And that's where 2008 comes back to today. 2008, it took a while for the housing market to crash. 
the mortgage lenders today were like, wait, wait, this feels all a bit too familiar. Go back and talk more about COVID-19. Oh, man. So this feels all too familiar. COVID-19, more, at this time, my first event got canceled. Twitter. I was supposed to go to Black Twitter Live in New York. That got canceled. I'm like, oh, bet. No big deal. This corona thing is a little more scary than possible. At least I get to come home, be home for a week instead of being in New York for nine days. Okay? Little did I know that would be the last time that I traveled. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that starts happening more and more, more and more. So these lenders are like, hey, these people in all these industries, they're, they're self-employed people. These people who can't, you know, don't have traditional jobs, they might not be working soon. We're not going to risk a crash as big as 2008. So these risky loans are done. And I'm talking about our neighbor is also self-employed, also been approved. And they had been building their house from the beginning. Mm -hmm. They had been doing everything from over a year, visiting their house three times a week. Mind you, me and Melissa visited the house three times a week for probably two months. They were supposed to close that Wednesday the or day Thursday. after we were supposed the day after we were at the landscaper, they were supposed to close. Our guy is like those people, the lender refused to fund that loan. So we're like, all right. Even if you had closed, like signed paperwork, but your loan wasn't funded, if they didn't actually. So there's a three day period yes. where you can change your mind. And basically the lenders were like, we can change ours too. Yeah. And so these are too if risky. If they didn't actually hit submit, whatever, and fund your loan, they rescind it. Yes. So me and Melissa, I'm like, bet, no worries. I'm not even tripping at this point. I'm like, dang, that sucks. I go back to my first guy who had fully underwritten us two months ago. I get him on the phone. I'm like, yo, they over here tripping. What's good with our loan? He was like, man, go back to them. We don't do that anymore anymore either at this point melissa goes into research mode she goes online every article in the world non-qm market disappears completely disappeared over from the market. night this literally ha if you guys google non-qm loans and hit the news tab of google you will see these articles disappears overnight what's the market gonna be when are these coming back will these ever come back and then this is when we i, I realized it was real companies that 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 specialize in these type of loans were closing their Hold doors it. completely talking. I mean, literally, there was a couple big ones were like, we're not doing this. And there was a couple other midsize and smaller ones that was like, we don't exist anymore at all. So at this point, I'm like, oh, my God, we might lose this house for real. OK, so we go to another lender. They're like, oh, we can do this mm -hmm. loan. All we need is 30% down. The problem is that we are good. So we have excellent credit. We have the ability. These are like the criteria that you're looking for whenever you're purchasing a home. What's your credit score? What's your ability to pay? What's your down payment situation? Those are like, you know, kind of the top three rocks. So we have excellent credit. We have the ability to pay. But the what was appealing about the loan um, program that we were offered is that the down payment amount was lower than the traditional amount. And so that, again, that was appealing to us. And as coronavirus is becoming more and more prevalent and we're starting to understand the gravity of how this is going to affect us, we're like, ho, 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 ho. Can we give you 30 percent? Yeah. But if we give you 30 percent and this doesn't lift and this doesn't change and things don't look different. Well, now we out that cash. So it's like we can give you 30 percent, but. The state of the wise? world, but is it wise? If I was touring regularly, done. Yeah. Right? I'm going to get that back in a year and whatever. I'm going to get that back. But my touring went from full to complete hard stop. And I told Melissa, like, it's going to come back, I'm certain, but it's not going to come back fully immediately. Mm -hmm. States are going to be opening. People are going to be a little leery for a while. You know, it might take a year mm -hmm. to be fully sell out, sell out, sell out, sell out again. I don't know if I want to be out of 30% mm -hmm. of that type of money for the next two years. Right. So here comes big argument number of deuce. Oh, I didn't think it was that big, but you can continue. Well, it's not as big as the first one. Mm -hmm. Now it's the decision. Of, now the, the builder's like, you guys, we can put you on hold, right? And hope the market clears up. But the problem is Melissa and I have children 
and that new home was in a great school district. We don't have the option of staying in this current house because it sucks. That is well, out. the the lease is up still in June, and we've already signed our notice to vacate. And of course, you can do which we did reach back out to the guy like, hey, if we wanted to do like a month to month situation temporarily to kind of float us to figure out what's going to happen, when is the last time we can figure that out? And it was like April third, sixty days before the time period and we're talking about this and april 3rd is like tomorrow it's like literally around the corner and so we're like we don't really know what to do we're trying to figure out if the best option is to kind of wait this out and see if something changes before june 3rd comes up and maybe we could still move into the house or is the best option to scrap the whole thing cancel the contract work to make sure we can get our money back and move somewhere else and continue to rent until things kind of stabilize. And that I think is what you're talking about. Yeah. So we have kids who need to be in a school and we're not staying in the current house. That's off the table. We don't know if we can move into the house we were buying and it looks bleaker and bleaker by the day. day. So then after that happens, more bad loan information came out that was affecting traditional mortgages as well. Jumble. I mean, it was just like, okay, this even stuff, if you had like a W two, there were certain markets in certain, and certain industries. Like certain, if you if you were in the restaurant industry. business, if you were in the airline business, if you were in the hotel business, then they were starting to say, oh, your W two is an affected industry, right? So we're not gonna we're not gonna fund your loan because you 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 work in a hotel, you might be furloughed or laid off. You work in a restaurant, or movie, whatever. You're even an actor. You yeah. might not be working. For a while. So I'm telling Melissa, like, Melissa, this doesn't look like it's going to clear up. Now, mind you, 2008, when this happened, it took like four or five years right. for these type of loans to even appear again. I think it was 2012. 12, yep. These came around and they basically lasted five years. This is all the research we've done post. So like as we were going through this, we were trying to understand the likelihood of this turning around within two months or so and us still moving into the house or if we need it to move on a different option yeah so the more research we do the more bleak it looks so i'm like dang (laughs) like i'm like legit like i am sad i am frustrated i feel helpless i feel i don't know just everything so the kids are a little sad they're more sad they were not nearly as invested as we were they just wanted their own rooms that's all they cared about but they saw how sad it made us, specifically Melissa. They're mama's boys. They like yeah. Well, there. The thing is, if you've ever gone through the process of really buying anything, I mean, a, a dog, a, a car, like anything. Once you're like, you can visualize, and that was the thing. Like the more I went to the home, and it started to be complete, and the floors. And listen, you guys, we did such a good job. Like. You guys know I'm this research fanatic and I went on this like binge of like, that's why I was designing back here because I was prepping myself and doing test runs really of how to style things. So once we moved into this home, I was like, this is gonna be my big girl house. This is my adult (laughs) house. I'm going to take my time. I'm gonna decorate it the way that I want. I'm gonna buy nice furniture pieces. Like I'm going to do a good job. Down to like, I knew paint colors, okay? Like I knew, five different white paint colors that were options that I wanted my walls to be. I knew um, carpet designs and like, I just knew so many things because I was fully emotionally invested in this house. I knew what I, like I could visualize myself being there. I could visualize my family being there. We were literally down the street from the school. You literally walked out of our complex, walked down the sidewalk and the school was kitty cornered. So I knew where Joe was gonna go to school. Like we were there, okay? Like in my mind, we lived there. We were just waiting for April 28th to come. And then we weren't. (laughs) And it was like, man, it was, listen, it was so abrupt. It was abrupt. It was so final. It actually wasn't so final. It'd been better if it had just been final. That's true. The market sucks. So I'm like, listen, we have to start looking for another place to live. And she's like, I cannot do. I cannot. I cannot be. I cannot search. So we start looking at some new places. And this is when L.A. is old and expensive. It becomes even more prevalent. Now, let me just tell you about one house specifically. This thing was in the boondocks. Private road, 
freaking like misery like you will get murdered here <laughs> and no one will even know your body is thrown off a cliff exactly we went inside this house which was stupid expensive to rent and this man had a purple toilet to match a purple bathtub first of all it wasn't purple it was raspberry no it was and he took offense <laughs> to us saying purple this man had put tile in the bathroom that had animal prints in there so i'm like yo do you have a dog or something she's like no actually what i did is when you buy tile from mexico sometimes the animals step on it while it's still drying i said can you give me all the ones that the animals have stepped on and i made it look like a dog was running into your bathroom i'm like you purposely <gasps> bought the ones the dog stepped on and some have birds and some have cat. so when you walk in the house it looked like a cat came in and went to the refrigerator a bird hopped into the living room and a dog goes from your bed <laughs> to, to the, the bathroom, bathroom. <laughs> i'm like you and this is ingrained like cement like when you write yes. your name in cement it's ingrained into like the tile. dried hard we like why would you do that and he was so you, proud. You know, I pride myself on being a non-traditional designer and architect. He built this house personally. He did. Bro, I'm talking about a skylight. He had a balcony that you couldn't step out of. It, it was just, like one of those smoke balconies. I'm like, fam, and I want all the money for this. No <laughs> sure Wi-Fi, did. no post. I look, oh, this is important to me. I get over there, I look at Postmates, Uber Eats. We don't go over there. That guy, yeah. This area is for freaking weirdos, okay? <laughs> So that's the worst of it. But the majority of them are just small but expensive, drab, or nice and out of this world expensive. expensive. This one that we looked at was my perfection. Yeah, it was. It was. It had a movie theater. It had surround sound in the backyard. But it was expensive. And the lady was like, and the electricity is a thousand a month. And the and gardener. And you need to pay is, for my gardener, which is gardener 500, 500 a month. Our last gardener was $85. <laughs> How are you going to force a $500 bill on me when everything else is expensive? So Melissa refuses to look up. And I've literally probably two weeks mm -hmm. of me looking at every available I'm house holding out hope and in emotionally I'm drained. School districts, research of the school districts. Are they on par? Is Joe going to like the new school? Are we going to be proud to be in this new school? What are the programs? What is it like? What's the safety? How far is it from the airport? I mean, all this stuff, right? And it's hard to do that when you don't really want to. Right. Because you don't want to live there. You want We <coughs> we had been okay with paying a lot, but we were paying a lot because it was ours. Mm -hmm. I don't want to pay a lot for yours. Yeah. I want to pay for mine. And um, then we just realized that this just sucks balls. What we end up doing is <laughs> telling our friends <laughs> and they're like, man, God's going to turn it around for you. <laughs> and I'm like, I believe God. I, li I like all that. But this had not turned around yet. Now what? It was very, very, very sad. But, you know, in times like this, what is most important is to make sure that your finances are in order so that in the event of a worldwide pandemic, right. you can sustain. Uh, it can be hard to know how to reach your financial goals, even in the best of times. And right now we are in the worst of times. Mm -hmm. Betterment is here to help you reach those goals and make the most of your money from the cash you save for tomorrow to the money you invest for retirement. How? While investing involves risk and betterment is designed designed to take care of the hard stuff and help you do what's right for your money. First, they'll ask you some questions about what you're saving for, then build a portfolio based on your needs. Then they'll provide ongoing expert guidance in the app itself to help you make smart decisions with your money. They can even give you advice on accounts you don't have with Betterment. They'll help you stay on track with your goals with tax saving features and easy to use tools like automatic deposits. And you get everything for one of the lowest fees in the industry. Since 2010, Betterment has helped over a half a million people manage more than $18 billion of their money. Download the Betterment app for Google Play or App Store to get started today. And there's really no better time than right now to start working on your financial goals. So now... We find the place. It is nice. <laughs> it's within our price range. 
we get the builder to, you know, actually what was crazy, the builder is great. And I, we don't even blame them at all. They were fantastic. They're like, we've actually never had this happen in the history of our company. What happens sometimes is you buy a house, somebody's approved, the last second they go take out a loan or something mm -hmm. about their credit happens and and we cancel the loan because they're no longer approved. We've never Meaning had, the builder cancels the loan on the um, applicants, which would be us. Because yeah, they're, they, they, they changed their financial situation before they closed and now the lender is not sure they're the same, you know, something in the underwriting changed. They were like, we've never had a situation where the lender has changed and they no longer, because what they do is underwrite you before they approve you right. so they don't have to go back and change their mind. Right. Right. So now we're in a situation where that, that's happened and we're like, okay, so, you know, give us our down payment back. Yeah. Give us the money we put down for, you know, earnest money and our for upgrades. upgrades, like give us our money back because now business Kev is happy. And here's another thing where me and Melissa are very different. When we lose the house and it's like we lost it, I'm like, dang, all right, man, forget that house. Mm -hmm. Like I just go into push down and move on mode, which is how I handle a lot of things. But in this instance, it was necessary because somebody had to be like, let's find us a new place. And I'm doing all the research, picking the ones I know Melissa would like within her price range, all that. And we saw some crazy ones. We saw one house where Mike Will made it live there yeah, we did. and it looked cool, but it's like, but what about kids? Like It was no, a total bachelor pad. It was stupid dope, but stupid, not good for families. No pantry, no cabinet space, little stuff that matters when you have to have a lot of Cheez-Its and <laughs> chocolate milk, you know, stuff like that. So we are like, hey, can we, you know, because at this point I'm like, all right, bet. If I might not be on tour for a year and events are down, which is a big part of our income, then I don't want to be putting this down payment down mm -hmm. as well. I'd rather pay rent and, uh, you know, we still own our own, our, our houses, our other houses, but I'd rather not have to pay a lot and have no reserve or have less reserve. Mm -hmm. We still have, you know, money saved. And Melissa's like, oh, I want to think about this. I was beyond frustrated. And Kevin, like he said, he can like move on quickly. Yeah, compartmentalize and move on. And I needed to go through the death like, and mourning I mean, process. I, don't, I didn't want to, I wanted to say grieving, but I don't know if that's heavy because I want to be sensitive to the fact that like people are actually dying from COVID-19. That's a good point. This is what me and Melissa felt like. Is it even fair to be sad about yeah. this? Because... People are really dying. Yeah. And it was like, you know, it, it's not literal death, but it was the it was the loss of a dream, at least. Yeah. You know, and here's what I told Melissa, and I just did cut you off, and I realized I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> I was going to let you live. I didn't even notice. I realized that I had accepted that it was going to take me being a humongous movie star, television mm -hmm. star, in order to buy a house. Like, Yvonne, Issa, our friends, we've watched them become humongo stars and buy crazy houses, yeah. but it took freaking being on HBO right, right, right. and movie. You know what I'm saying? Like those are the only two people we know that that didn't have a house that they owned before, before. and now do. And or and Brisha. Mm -hmm. And Brisha again, freaking ten movies, right. literally. Yeah. And she just bought a house maybe two years ago. So in my mind, I'm like, I'll buy a house in Charlotte, in Houston, <laughs> in you know what I'm saying, in Georgia, in Florida, in Arizona. I'm not gonna be able to buy a house in LA for a long time. Yeah. I knew I'd be able to do it eventually. Not, I thought maybe by the time I'm 40. So the fact that we, you know, I, I kind of want to say stumbled into this house because yeah. we didn't have we plans did. of going to buy a house mm -hmm. because we knew we were going to need crazy money down mm -hmm. and crazy reserves and all that because we didn't think this loan program existed. So now that it exists, I'm like, I'm like, oh man, we, we, we get to have a dream, you yeah. know, you know, before, even possible, and I'm thanking God for that. Yeah. And look what it did before I hung and doing, yeah. and, it, and then all that happens, and then it's like, but nah, though, and then it's like, okay, how do you move forward to this? Right. You know, you move to this new house, and the new house is funky. Yeah, like no, it I is like it. Dope. <laughs> it comes with its own problems of like Melissa bought furniture, not only for the new house, for the exact. I mean, you, bro, when I, I want to explain to y'all how many times we went up to that house. Tape measures, 
iPhone levelers, mm. the the software that you can like 3D put yeah. the furniture in there. We had planned on having Thanksgiving at our house. Mm. And this dining table that she bought was for this part of this house. It's huge. And I had my own little studio room and I was going to build it like this and have like that. <laughs> and the boys had their own rooms. And well, they still have that. In the backyard, in the master bedroom, had a deck, mm-hmm. and we was gonna put a little fridge out there, have so a glass nice. of wine or something like that, <laughs> and look over our backyard. We gonna have Mel and Greg come over, and we was gonna go in the fire pit. I mean, JoJo's gonna be able to walk home. I mean, I was visualizing we all saw it of all. this. I was like, man, this grocery store. I'm gonna walk down here. There's a Whole Foods right here. Mm-hmm. There's a brand new movie theater, AMC, yeah. which might not, not ever even, open. This movie theater never even actually opened, nope. and it might never, never actually open. open. So I'm like, oh man, we got AMC, my rewards points are going to transfer. <laughs> I mean, like in our mind, we were there. Listen, me and Kev are so ridiculous that we went to the Whole Foods he was just mentioning and just walked around and was like, Look we just at us. went grocery shopping in there, like, we up in here with y'all. Y'all just in here, we do too. We don't live here yet, but we fit too. We Look at us. We moving over here. What with- you getting, milk? Yep, okay. <laughs> like, we were so. And we took it back to excited. our raggedy house. <laughs> We were so Let me buy some Whole Foods groceries so you guys can see me over here living where y'all live. Man. Like looking around at all these people. There are some other influencers that we saw buying houses that, yep. in, in the Whole Foods. Like, oh, y'all live here? <laughs> hmm, I've seen your house. Oh, I've seen your new home tour. <laughs> right? So all that came crashing down. And God's real and fervent and able and all that stuff. But also sometimes bad stuff happens. Yeah. And and there was no there was no because my brother he was like he was so encouraging he, he brought was, me to tears he was like, if God could heal me from the cancer yeah. then I know so he was like y'all gonna get the house back and then he was like but we did it he's like well, I ain't but, no prophet no he said we're gonna get something better what we hope in the end what we had to decide was whether or not we wanted to um, again hold out on this new house go through the process of trying to buy a new house. Um, like starting over or if we want it to essentially just rent and what we've decided is best for us right now in this moment the house that you see online is the house that we're in that we've just decided to rent hold on to our cash um, until we wait the storm out. yeah wait the storm out until COVID-19 calms down and we can figure out what's going on and move forward at that time because at the end of the day cash is king you can't buy groceries with your nice house you can't buy clothes that you make like you can't buy things with your home and so we've decided that it is best for us at this time especially being self-employed it is so important to have some money in the bank because we do not know what the future holds and also the last time we bought a house and the market crashed we were upside down for like five six years child we was upside down forever and it was like being upside down on a house in washington that we bought when we had no money not as big of a deal the way we were upside down percentage per- wise and then apply it to the house we were going to get in this new house. We were upside down more than the down payment was going to be right. <laughs> like our whole how homes value in Washington is less than the down payment for houses in L.A. Like yeah. so we were like, you know what? I don't want to have a house that's this expensive mm-hmm. and be upside down in that house right. because you when you're upside down, you either have to rent to someone or you lose your house, or you have to live in it past the time you want to Mm -hmm. because you can't sell it. So what we're hoping that the Lord does is when this is all over, we can get a better I'm hoping house, that the, whole, the house, housing mouse house, crashes. Or I'm, I'm not hoping that it crashes. I mean, not like people. that, but just that homes go I'm less hoping expensive. we can capitalize on lower there prices. There we go. Yeah. That's a good way to say it. We're hoping that it becomes more of a buyer's market, okay? Right, right. Because the guy who rents us this house was like, he marked we it got a deal. way yeah. under market. Like, I was like, we looked at homes in this area. Yeah. This is by far the cheapest. Yeah. He like, I'm paying for the gardener. I'm paying for the pool guy. I'm paying for all that. Matter of fact, I give you half off for two months. Yeah. Come move in early. Because remember, our lease, if you notice, we're already in the home. Yeah. And, uh, and our lease is up till June, and we weren't supposed to really move until May, because, again, we weren't closing until April 28th. 
Um, so we moved in early because the guy was like, with COVID-19, I'm not sure people are going to be able to afford this home at this original price. So yeah. I'm going to knock it down. Can I get you guys in there early? And I'll give you guys basically buy one month, get one month free. And so that's what we decided to do. And that's why we moved in early. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to see this house in videos. I've Thank already you. filmed. In fact, this comes out on Thursday. On Saturday, I will do the moving vlog and the um, new home tour. Thank you. Because, uh, listen, and henceforth, now and forevermore, you will see the house. Yeah. Because it's not a house to be ashamed of. Yeah. Like, I, I, I've i been looking at the wrong camera again. Patreon people, I just pay attention to y'all. I look directly <laughs> to y'all. And without Our Patreon doing it, view is um, viewers is are watching like this right live. to the left. So. I'm sorry for, for people who are not on Patreon that I'm not looking at the right camera, but shoot, I'd just be messing up. But, um, yeah, our room wasn't, like, it was small. small. You know how dumb your house looks when you take and everything out? I be, I went back and looked out. I was like, what's so stupid house? <laughs> but at the time, like, that's all, that was a dope house for us because we were in an apartment before, and it was like we were moving from an apartment to an actual house. Yeah. The kids could be loud. I never realized how loud my kids were until we moved into an apartment because we had lived in our, the house we owned in Washington. So you'd be loud. Who cares? It's your house. You don't hear nothing. But boy, I would come around the corner. I hear Zay Zay and Jojo yeah. fighting, they do running now. down the stairs. And now they have their own rooms. And when I tell you, they're turning the back on you process. <laughs> it's so real. All they do is sit in their room and close the door. They go to school in there. They come out, out to... Zay Zay has a bathroom in his room. Yeah. So he literally only comes out of his room to eat joe actually comes and talks to us sometimes he goes to the bathroom i catch him in the hallway hey hey man why are you okay <laughs> but for the most part now all they do is sit in their room because they don't bother you because what happens they share room they used to bother each other yeah so joe would come and sit and hanging out our in our room. room all the time or zay zay would go into my office when joe was in they would always be in different spots because they didn't have their own space and then they got their own space. They, Joe don't come hang out in our room no, no more. No, Zay Zay doesn't even speak to us. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> he just eats. But it's a nice house in a nice neighborhood in a great school district on a golf course. It's clean. I fell down the stairs there. <laughs> I almost fell uh, the other night. Um, I, I I I don't know what happened. <laughs> but I'm not trying to flex. But I'm still grateful. Like. Yeah. I, I want to be grateful for what God's doing, even though it's not what I wanted to be done. Mm. It's very close in size to our house. It's a little smaller, but uh, yeah. A little smaller, but you can't really tell. No. It's, it's you the know. The setup is just different. The setup's different. Yeah, it has its, you know, whatever. But it's a very nice house in a very nice neighborhood. It has a gate. 24 hour <laughs> gated community, which was important for me because I, I told the story on here about the Uber driver who. I don't know. There was times, there was multiple occasions where Uber drivers or Postmates people had recognized me. Mm -hmm. And it's a little uncomfortable to be like, ah, this person knows exactly where I live and mm -hmm. I don't have, you know, you could just walk into my house at any time. You come to my family when I'm not home. Now, there's a guard gate. <laughs> so if you ain't on the list, like, boy, you can't come in. So there's one time this guy, he called me or he dropped our food off on Uber and then the Uber app called. So I thought he, you know, I thought he forgot food or whatever he's like man i am a fan i ain't really want to say nothing but could you come out and get a picture could i get a picture with yeah, you that really happened and i was like <laughs> i need to live in a gated community <laughs> our other house is going to be in a gated community too um so that's a little bit better the boys you know they're happy about that it's a nice school and it's it's nice the kitchen is crazy mm -hmm. nice with the view, that part is better yeah, than yeah, our yeah, for sure. house. The backyard, it's got a pool, and we sound like some freaking rich jerks. I was about to say, you're about to get off this tangent in a minute. <laughs> no, I just, I, why I got to get off? <laughs> I just don't, you know, we're still in the pandemic. I just want to be sensitive to no, what people I mean, are going through. No, I mean, we just talked for an hour about how we lost our dream home, and we we, we <laughs> live somewhere else, you yeah. know. Uh, it's it's a nice house, and I'm thankful for what God's doing and done. I'm thankful that we can afford it. I'm thankful that even with the, the tour at a standstill, thankfully, me and Melissa grew up poor and we don't spend money on nothing. So the money we make, we save. Because mm -hmm. if it were like, oh, a Range Rover, this and that, we'd be out of luck mm -hmm. now. So um, that's the whole story. It sucks. It does suck. I sympathize with everyone who has been affected in any way, to be honest, um, in any way at all from COVID-19. What's funny is that I... Um, 
obviously have been in this d- interior design kick and so I've been following a ton of interior designers and I started following this um, black couple I'll try to remember to link them in the description box if you're interested but um, she has a really nice home and she was in the process of uh, buying a new construction home and she posted recently our house was stolen from us or something along those lines. And I was like, what is she talking about? And so I went back on her, her Instagram feed and I noticed that like some of her um, pictures were gone from the house. So I was like, what happened? So I went back and watched the video. Lo and behold, the exact same thing happened to them Mm -hmm. the exact same thing they didn't give quite as much detail as we did as far as like the loan types and that kind of thing um but as i'm listening to the store i'm like i already know what happened i already know what that is i already know what that is because the exact same thing happened to us she sent it to me and i was like this is literally our story yeah I mean, verbatim. Yep. At the same time it was happening to us, it was happening, happening to, to them. them. Yep. For the same with reasons. The only thing that's different between their story and ours, which I'm grateful for with us, is that because we got approved through their preferred lender, we're able to cancel our contract um, because it is their default and get our money back. They went through an outside lender. And so now they're fighting to get their money back. Oh, I didn't go that far into yeah, the video. Yeah, no. So because they didn't get, or maybe it didn't offer, I don't know which one, Either but way. essentially their the builders builder, like, that ain't our problem. Exactly. You can't, you've already signed. Oh, and by the way, I meant to say this. If you like, if you are approved and then you do something to mess your credit up, technically they can keep your down yeah, payment. Yeah, yeah, That's a default, uh, uh, not a default. What's uh, against the contract? Um. Like a violation of the contract. There's yeah. a very specific word I'm looking for, but I can't think of it right now. But if you violate like the terms of the contract and they have to cancel and it's your fault, they have to keep the they get to keep the deposit. But with us, because we had gone through the process of getting approved through their preferred lender, which is again the, the their own business really, because they have their own in house lender, um, that it's their default. We our circumstance hasn't changed, our credit hasn't changed, our money hasn't changed. We put down the everything you've asked us to do we've done (laughs) you can't uh pull up on your end therefore it's your fault we can't do this and so literally in our email right now is our cancellation for us to get all of our money back so actually that's low-key like a tidbit if anything that i've learned through this is to always get approved through their preferred lender especially and read the contract more closely or than even you normally do yeah because some of that stuff that you wouldn't have ever thought Happens, and that's the thing about Corona. There's some stuff that's happened in my career that India, India, I can't share specifically, mm-hmm. but dream achieved that I never dreamed. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. it is not all doom and gloom. It's just mostly doom and gloom. Yeah. Because <laughs> there are some stuff, and hopefully I'm gonna find out if I could tell you one day, but I don't. I can't tell you now. I'll, don't even bog down that patch. But yet. I'm yeah. I do not want to ruin that thing. But bruh. <laughs> Some stuff happened that I would have would have never thought and would never have happened if if the, yeah. ev- if the planets didn't align this way. So that's just like the silver lining us trying to find the silver lining in in this because the fact of the matter sometimes stuff sucks and it just it just sucks. It sucks. It just absolutely sucks and you have to find a way to push forward because you can't. We couldn't just stay in the old house. You know what I'm saying? We just. Yeah. You know, eventually we could have stayed for a month, three months, but eventually a decision was going to have to be made. And, you know, we just made the one that made us move forward. But it's also sucks. <laughs> so I think that's it. If you guys have any um, questions, I think we did a pretty good job. Yeah, for sure. Um, of going through all of this. But th- if there are any questions that you have and we didn't answer, feel free to shoot me an email. And um, maybe at the beginning of the next episode, we'll do like a tidbit. <sighs> but for the month of May, stay tuned because I am going to start my four men only series. I'm really excited about it. I have some guests lined up and um yeah we're gonna talk about some really exciting things i think that's it for now um until check out melissa's channel this week and moving forward for her house to home series yes because we're still gonna decorate it we're, yeah. we're gonna make the most of it. and like i don't want it to be like this new house sucks and we're sad like we love it it's nice the sadness was with the old house that is gone but the house to home stuff the new stuff the new videos that we're shooting in there we're all happy about that part so uh, check our channel out. We're going to be sh- now that we're like 
for sure. For sure. Well, now that we're set up, yeah. we, we kind of took a week off of shooting her channel because we were we were moving. And let me tell you how bored we were, y'all. <laughs> we had movers hired. Yeah. Because we had nothing to do, we were like, let's just move it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Kind of regret that a little bit. It was a lot more work than I, mean, I thought. We packed up the stuff. We didn't actually move it. Oh, yeah. We didn't physically. I am not strong. Um, but, like, unpacking, that that took about a week. You know, it takes about a week to, to get settled. We had a lot of new furniture, and, and the floor plan was all like this. Like, yeah. Melissa had that other floor plan memorized to a T. Mm -hmm. Would have taken no time to move in. But she really, like, okay, now where does this go? These rooms are different size. You know what I'm saying? It's just all different. And a lot of the furniture she had bought was for that thing. Luckily, it's big, so it fits, but it's not exact. Yeah. So check that out. And we're really trying to build up her channel while we are not able to travel and stuff. And I'm having a good time there. So the channel, the challenges are going to be starting to air again. Uh, and her stuff is going to start to air again. So. I think that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this little bit different love. Hour. Actually, the entire month of April was kind of a little bit different. Why uh, do you think it's different? Huh? Why do you keep saying it's different? Because it wasn't like topic based that I would normally do oh, okay. for the love hour. Um, but we'll be back um, in May for the four men only series that you guys have been asking for. So that will definitely be happening. Uh, that's it. Until the next time. Bye.